Welcome, tiny adventurers, to Grounded. As you progress through the game, the challenges ahead are going to get harder. We're going to take a look at one of the first places that gives you access to some Tier 3 items, the Sandbox. There's a few ways to get into the Sandbox. You can travel through the Black Ant Hill and pop up from the inside. You can build massive stairs. It is a building game after all. Or you can finish the already built zipline behind the field station at the top of the picnic table. For that last option, you need to bring 12 silk rope with you in order to build it. Once it's done, you can enter the sandbox. This is moderately terrifying! The first thing you'll notice when you enter this area is something called the sizzling debuff at the top of the screen. If the bar reaches full, you'll take a lot of damage and die really quickly. The only defense you have right now is to hide in the shade. To protect yourself from the sizzle, you need some gear that gives you sizzle protection. This includes antlion armor, which we're going to build today. You can also unlock the fresh defense mutation, which gives you some sizzle protection, by eating mint shards. Eat a total of 10 mint shards to max this mutation out. For now, an even better idea though, is to wait until the sun sets. There's no sizzle effect if the sun isn't beaming down on you. The sandbox is filled with antlions, and you'll encounter two different types. The first one just roams the sandbox. It digs around the sand and will likely catch you by surprise unless you hear it digging around. Antlions have three basic attacks. It always starts with its digging attack. It sinks into the ground, then lunges upward at you. After that, it'll either attack by biting you or charging at you. Both of these attacks are telegraphed well, and as long as you keep your shield up, you'll learn their attack patterns rather quickly. You can also attack the ant lion while it's underground. The other kind of ant lion are the ones stuck in a pit. These ant lions don't move, but they have a lot more hit points, and their attacks can be quite painful. If you're far away, they'll throw black ant corpses at you. If you're in the pit, but not in melee range, they'll throw sand at you, which pulls you in. And if you're in melee range, they'll use a few different melee attacks against you. If you kill one of these antlions and loot their corpse, this will actually open up a tunnel beneath the sand. You'll usually find mint shards, spicy shards, or salt shards down there. After killing a few antlions, you should have everything you need to build a full set of tier 3 armor, including the antlion greatsword. In total, you need 17 antlion parts, 4 antlion pincers, and a bunch of other random but simpler ingredients from other places. Once you've crafted those, you'll not only have stronger armor, but you can now explore the sandbox when the sun is out. During the day, you'll occasionally see sparkles in the sand. These are locations with buried treasure. They can either be ice cap mints, hot cha-cha's candy, or chests with various loot. Use your black ant shovel to dig them out. And as of the 1.0 launch, there's also an extra bonus treasure in the northeast corner of the sandbox. Yeah, this area is too hot for me. If you find and dig up a skeleton, you'll get the biomedical badge accessory. When equipped, your health will regen automatically, but you'll get hungry faster. Near the center of the sandbox is a secret lab outpost. You can only open this after you've obtained the Assistant Manager's keycard. For more on that, check out my video on navigating the Black Ant Hill lab. Inside this lab is an auxiliary chip for Burgle that teaches you 
advanced smithing, flavored gloves. These gloves are used for crafting and upgrades later. The lab also has a curious design on the whiteboard. It might be difficult to understand what it's saying, but it's trying to tell you about a secret buried treasure in the sandbox you can find at 3.30 or 15.30 if you're looking at the 24-hour clock format. Go outside near the large shovel in the middle of the sandbox and follow the shadow it casts until it hits 3.30. You'll find some buried treasure there, which is the Melted Moat Key. The chest for this key is located underwater to the south of the sand castle. Inside this chest is a recipe for the salt morning star, as well as a milk molar. And that basically covers everything you need to know about the sandbox. You might have thought the sand castle was important but it only has a few upgrade materials and is the location for the Sandcastle Tower quest marker. If you get that quest and want to complete the marker, you're going to have to build some sort of stairs to get to the top. You probably won't have access to any grass, but there are some weeds in the southeast corner that can help you with this. In my case, I just built a spiral staircase. Now that we have some sizzle protection, let's take a look at something at the opposite side of the picnic table. When you climbed the picnic table for the first time, you might have noticed the barbecue spill. If you also completed the haze lab, you may have access to or have already unlocked an upgrade called Advanced Production Buildings. This unlocks the oven, which requires Everchar coal chunks to craft. This location is where we'll get some of those. However, without any sizzle production, it's basically impossible to get any coal chunks. You can get to the barbecue spill by either using a dandelion tuft and floating down from the picnic table, or you can get up there via the upper yard ascent. The upper yard ascent is located here on the map. You'll need to bring a brat burst bomb to clear out a rock that's in the way. Once it's cleared, you now have a path where you can get up to the upper yard by foot. Later on though, you should spend some time building some stairs to get up there to make your life easier. Once you're at the top, be aware that there are several new creatures to keep an eye out for. For now, you should only have to worry about ladybird larvas since that's what's by the barbecue spill. You may want to kill a few to stock up on tough gunk. To get some Everchar cold chunks, you're going to have to be extra careful. Even with a full set of antlion armor, it's incredibly hot when you're up close to the charcoal. Run in, give it a couple swings with your hammer, then run out if things get too hot. Repeat this step until you have some cold chunks. You can get around 20 from the whole area at a time, but you only need four to make an oven. The oven mainly allows you to craft upgrade materials like globs and mushroom bricks for cooler looking buildings. With globs, you can now craft weapons like the mint mace, which is a personal favorite of mine, and the Salt Morning Star, which is a great one-handed weapon that easily stuns enemies. There are several other Tier 3 items to cover, but we'll stop here for now. Next time, we're going to upgrade one of the tools we've been using since the start of the game and make ourselves the Termite Axe. Until then, remember to stay out of the sun. I'll see you next time.